Hey there, fellas. In today's episode, we'll be torturing this here automobile. You've seen this one a bunch of times before. This here is our van, which has been called Buchanich and other nicknames. It's been a while since we've featured it. And if I'm being honest, the motor on our van is slowly nearing its death. We don't really have any experience with diesel engines. Anyway, in order to silence it completely, I suggest we do the following. So a bunch of our viewers requested that instead of diesel fuel, we feed the motor with oil, kerosene, gasoline and other stuff. And look at what we've got here. We got ourselves some cooking oil, sunflower seed to be exact, some WD-40, kerosene, brake fluid, Dexron, and of course we had to invite Valera to the party. So today we're going to be using all of this stuff instead of diesel fuel and looking on to see how the diesel motor reacts to it. We just have to load everything up, start the engine, Find a place with some snowbanks. I mean, assuming it works, it'd be nice to check and see how it pulls. And how it behaves in general. Okay, time for some experimentation. Let's get ready and head out. Right, guys, we've made it outside and now we start using the different liquids and driving around in the snow. Just to get a good idea on how the engine pulls. That's what we came out here to do, right? Right, enough with the chit-chat. Let's just start pouring stuff in. We should start by detaching the return line and the feed line. Yeah, yeah, both of them. The guys actually came up with a pretty interesting idea. So they're looking to connect the high pressure pump directly to see whether it can do its job without the supply pump. We've heard a bunch of scary stories about these pumps crapping out even if a bit of air finds its way inside. Well, I guess we're about to find out if that's true. I mean, we are going to be out here for a while. Let's start with something simple, like kerosene. Kerosene? Okay, let's remove this. And we need to swap them over quickly, so that no air... Well, I guess now it's too late. Right, here's what we'll do. We take the supply hose, and in order to keep the system free of air, we'll carefully pour in some kerosene to the point where it's full. There we go. 30 centimeters left. 25. That's enough. Wait a second, dude. This isn't optimal in terms of... Are there any bubbles in there? I don't see any. I can see one coming out. Where? There it is. There we are, that part is full. We're almost done here. Now I can see it up here. Okay, so now we quickly stick it into that bottle. Yeah. Okay, we have a fuel source. So I made it in. It did, but I think it'll exit through the return line. We'll stick it in there as well. Firing it up. Look at how the air is moving. Oh, yeah. Right, fellas, as you just witnessed, the air found its way out. Even if a bit did make it into the plunger, it probably made it out through the return line. Everything works, it's all good. Kerosene works quite well, actually. No surprise. Yeah, no surprises there. It's all good, the van is moving with zero hesitation. This van rocks, man. Fantastic. Very nice. It's got a pleasant sound to it. Oh, yeah, it's great. What can I say here, fellas? As we expected, the engine was happy to run on kerosene. Even if it does sound a bit different, it's got a slight ring to it. Otherwise, it's all good, we've got plenty of grunt. The van happily makes its way through the snow. Now look at how we routed the exhaust pipe. If I can explain why we did this, we actually fitted this motor with a new turbo. But since we didn't want to trash it, we took it off and stuck on a piece of pipe. We're running a straight pipe from the motor without the turbo. The engine works just fine. It starts and runs. With a bit of kerosene left in the system, we'll now try feeding in some sunflower seed oil. The engine will start on kerosene, but in a matter of seconds it'll begin running on cooking oil. Right, so this here is... We won't name the brand. Sunflower seed oil. Unrefined, aromatic, yeah, unrefined, fragrant. Let me take a whiff. Smells like seeds, yeah. Smells like seeds, okay, great. Let's carefully extract the feed line. Hurry up, man. We stick it into the oil, and there's air in the system again. That's not ideal. I don't see anything. Okay, then. Removing the return line from the kerosene. Maybe we leave the return line where it was? To make sure we're running on cooking oil 100%. I reckon that small bit of kerosene left in the system isn't going to make a difference. I guess you're right. If anything, it'll thin out that oil. Let's do it your way. Starting the engine. It's still on kerosene. It's beginning to suck in the oil. Give it some gas, Vlad. 
Yeah, keep it like that, man. The oil is coming up the line. We have oil supply. There's still some kerosene in the return line. Bleeding it out. What's with the exhaust? Oh wow, isn't that a hoot? It smells like someone's cooking something. Not necessarily potatoes, but... Smells like a frying pan, or a cafeteria. You know, a school cafeteria. For real, man. The knocking has gone away. Do you hear how the engine's operating? It sounds softer. Exactly. Even the injectors in the high-pressure pump. It's more like the motor itself, not the high-pressure pump. It had a sort of ring to it on kerosene. Oh yeah, for sure. It was very noticeable. But on cooking oil, it sounds smooth and soft. Agreed. Maybe we should drive around. Is it even going to pull? It goes. Oh, wow. It doesn't just go. It's faster now? What, you don't feel it? It goes like hell. Far out. What kind of oil is this? I want to drive in the deep snow. Now it smells like seeds. Hell yeah. This is pretty cool. Are we gonna shut it off and try starting it? On cooking oil? Yeah? No problem, let's do it. I bet it'll fire up. Easy. No problem. Right, fellas, we just tried using sunflower seed oil. It does smell pretty nice. As if you're cooking something. You know what? I get the impression that we might have increased the compression, since it was pulling pretty hard even without the turbo. You know, I'd happily use cooking oil if it was cheaper than diesel fuel. Okay, great. Where do we go from here? Let's try the WD-40. Sure, why not? For the purpose, we have a separate canister. Now we take this liquid inside this blue can. Wait a minute, dude. That's not WD-40. Who bought it? What is that stuff? Who bought this? Who sold us this crap? I don't know. You were the one who went to the store. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? We've dried out the kerosene canister, and now we pour in this... lubricant. This obscure liquid which was supposed to be WD-40. <laughs> so here's my theory. A diesel engine should be able to run on anything that burns. Exactly, on anything that burns. So if this stuff is flammable, the car will drive, meaning we've got a good diesel. I tried lighting it and it does actually burn. Oh, it does? Of course. Aren't we a bunch of experimenters? Please don't die, Van. Now we do what we can. Come on, dude. Fire it up now. Well, relocate the tube first. Dude, can you do it any slower? Okay, go for it. There we go. Pour it straight into the tube like you did before. We'll use a different method. And it's dead. Frickin' A. Air in the system. That's for sure, man. Stalling? Indeed. It's not sucking it in for whatever reason. It doesn't want to pick it up. All right, take two. On WD-40. Rev it up. Same story, it's foaming up. Hit the gas. That's foot to the floor. Slava even filmed how it... Damn it. We got foam coming out of the high-pressure pump. It gets sucked up. But once it gets inside, it turns into foam and finds a way out. It backs up, gets into the return line. It just starts coming out through any hole it can find. 
We have no idea why it's doing that, but here we are. I see we put this fluid away, fire it up on kerosene once again, and carry on. Let's try Valera. We could do that. Or maybe to dilute what's in there, let's use Dexeron. Yeah, let's try that. And so now, we get to the red liquid, which is called Dexeron. Right, pouring it into the canister, some Dexeron. Fired up. There we go. It's in the engine. The return line. You've got sparks flying. We should have done this at night. Let's go for a ride. Okay, let's give it a try. Up a hill. Well, a slight incline. Nah. Well, at least it moves. It does. But... I like the cooking wheel more. So much smoke. You saw the whole thing, fellas. That liquid, which was supposed to be WD-40 but turned out to be something else, didn't work as fuel. Meanwhile, the decks are on. It works. But let's be honest here. If we shut it off and try starting it, will it even? No problem. And it started with a... It does fire up nicely, though. But this ain't no Euro Zero. More like minus one. <laughs> right, what should we use next? What do we have left? Brake fluid. Oh yeah, brake fluid. So what do people do in the winter to keep diesel fuel from freezing? They sometimes pour in up to two bottles of brake fluid per tank to keep the fuel from crystallizing. But is it going to work on pure brake fluid? Let's find out. Placing the brake fluid. Right. We quickly stick the return line in there as well. Let her rip, dude. There it goes. Give it some gas. And no smoke. Thick smoke is gone. Wanna go for a drive? Yeah, let's do it. It moves. It's all good. So a diesel motor is happy to run even on brake fluid. It pulls pretty much like on Dexeron. There is not that much of a difference. Except for a lack of smoke from the exhaust pipe, unlike the Dexeron. I guess that's why they added to keep the fuel from freezing, since it combusts pretty much like diesel fuel. Now what do we try? We still have that... Valera. Valera. Right, Valera. Stick it in there. Oh man, we've already got a ton of air. Awesome. Now we start it. Oh wow. It doesn't really have much of a smell. So while we're driving around, I'll explain why Valera works as fuel. And why does it? I've noticed a bunch of times that, even when you spray it from a can, it never foams up. When you spray it onto nuts, bolts, even if they are rusty, 
I'm guessing that's why it's working for us. Maybe. Let's go. Does it pull? Sure does. But it was probably better on the cooking oil. Indeed it was. I'm pretty sure that normal WD-40 wouldn't have worked either. Why do you think so? So when you spray it onto something like fasteners, for example, you can immediately see the foam start to form. You know what, you're right, actually. Meanwhile, spray can Valera doesn't do that. It just doesn't. If we did have a bit in a spray can, and we tried to use it, like spray it onto something, my theory is that it has a different chemical composition and it works in a slightly different way. Okay, fellows. So we've just checked to see what you can use as a sort of alternative fuel for a diesel engine. By the way, guys, bear in mind that we're running an old-style high-pressure pump in this one. If you use kerosene in a common rail diesel, that'll most probably kill it. Because I have a good buddy who told me that in certain places if you were to have insufficient lubrication even for a split second, so if you happen to run into that sort of situation, Something craps out and the repair cost is pretty steep. To be honest, I don't really know myself, since I don't have much experience with these things. As for a trusty old diesel engine, well, you saw it all for yourselves. It eats up kerosene, and it's happy to run on any sort of oil, cooking oil, transmission fluid, or otherwise. I'm fairly confident that you can use anything you want. Just make sure you're running some kind of oil. By the way, you know what's curious? It really pulled on that sunflower seed oil. Like hard. The other oils weren't as great, but the engine did still have some grunt, and plenty of it actually. It just doesn't care. As for the smoke, well, it did put on a massive smoke show on Dexeron, which you saw for yourselves too. As for the liquid which we call Valera, well, you saw that as well. The car goes like stink, no smoke, plenty of torque. Though not as much as on sunflower seed oil. Still though, it drove. So yeah, any sort of oil or flammable liquid can be used no problem. And that concludes this experiment. This one was good. Subscribe to our Instagram and our second channel. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah, send in your comments and suggestions. Hit that like button. Alright, catch you later.